Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode it looks like we have some interesting contracts to look at. First of all, the Aphrodite probe is already on its way to Venus. So maybe we should get this science data from space around Venus just for the heck of it. We don't have any other Venus contracts. We were sort of doing that mission pro bono. Uh, so let's get some, some funds out of it. And not much by way of prestige unfortunately, but we're pretty high up on the prestige anyway. And I, I just, I, on principle, would like to get that there. Um, but more importantly, we have this crewed lunar flyby mission that could be interesting. And we'll have to do it in a year and, uh, well, call it 300 days. Uh, but it gives us quite a lot. Failure is really bad. Um, failure is really bad. But we have a rocket to do this with. The downside is we have to bring them back. So before I pick this up, I want to make sure that we have a lunar rated heat shield. <laughs> let me let me just uh, verify that. We also have this first docking, and that seems relatively simple. But I need to check whether I have an appropriate docking port. That will be necessary to get to the moon anyway. All right. So docking port, we have this propellant only one, but that will be okay assuming it works. Um, we would like the full NASA docking system, but a propellant docking port is a start. As far as the heat shields are concerned, well, we have an Apollo Command Module heat shield. One would hope that that would be good enough, but just in case, these are called lunar rated heat shields, so they should be good enough too. All right. Well, lunar flyby mission in a year and 300 days seems a bit tight. We'll get heavy orbital rocketry in 158 days, which would allow me to build a more proper rocket for this. But I guess we'll have to try with, with our existing systems. So crude lunar flyby. Yep. And first docking. I'm amazed that we haven't done a docking already, but we have to practice that, and that's in a year. So that's actually earlier. Okay. So given those contracts, let me see what I can build. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have adapted the Oliver spacecraft system, I guess is what we'll call it, for this purpose, and I decided to separate out its service module engines. So, well, actually it only had one of the Astros engines before, now it has two. And so we've got sort of a space tug sort of configuration here. Uh, that's only to get into orbit around the moon and then break orbit and return. So if we can do this, we can do that sort of mission. And that's sort of handy. Uh, the little service module now only has backup Arizean N204 for the RCS thrusters. It's got the escape system, so in an escape, a launch escape situation, it's going to decouple the docking port and uh, use those separation motors to boost away. And that's more effective now because it's not carrying the rest of the fuel load or the engine. So that's how the abort is configured there. Um, and it's got solar panels up here. Uh, this tank here, which used to also contain aerosene and N204, now contains extra food, water, and oxygen. So this is the other configuration of the Oliver. If you remember when I first talk about, talked about this system, uh, I said that this would be coming up, and indeed it is. We have the remote controller in the nose, along with uh, other RCS ports, and also a reaction wheel. And of course, this is going to be launched first without any crew member. Uh, so we're not uh, originally. I was going to test a Nico Centaur rocket with a uh, with a fuel tank, a fuel depot, but I'm going with this instead. We've got a lunar rated heat shield here with uh, 200 ablator. I have dumped all the ablator on the capsule itself, so hopefully that's all right. Um, and here, this is going to give us 2,300 meters per second. You see, it's an independent module. It's got this Delta Avionics package. It's got a docking port. So in theory, if we want to keep it around, it can be refueled. And it can boost itself up to, uh, once it's uh, deposited this into a suborbital trajectory at Earth, uh, it could boost itself up and rescue itself. And we can continue using it if we wanted to. Um, that might be a little bit more hassle than it's worth. We'll see. I know that this RCS port is sort of clipping on there. 
So let me tilt it a little bit to make sure all the nozzles are clear. Okay, and it's got communications as well too. While I'm here, let me verify. Okay, so um, one has toggle antenna there. Um, maybe I should just say activate. I rarely want to deactivate anyway. And I want to activate these as well. And then two should be the solar panels and we'll just extend all of them. And hopefully that'll keep. Okay. And I put two asterisk engines in order to limit the burn time to six minutes. It's still probably a little bit long. We definitely have enough avionics. There's five tons in the remote controller up there and then 10 tons here. And if there was a Kerbal in here, that'd be another 5 tons, so definitely more than the 10.1 tons that we need. Okay, so that is the main package, and the rest of the rocket is exactly the same Nico Centaur that you have seen and that we intend to test. So hopefully it will work out. It is a tall rocket. It is uh, 75 meters out of our possible 80, and the mass is quite substantial. Uh, I'm curious why they decide that the width and length should be limited to... Oh, that's probably for planes and such. Uh, it's not really reasonable for a rocket. Uh, you can end up with a pancake. Okay, so plenty of Delta V to work with, and we're going to see how it works. It's going to take 105 days to build, but probably we'll speed up the build time and also our research time using the funds that we've gotten, since we don't need those primarily for our rockets. There's only 35,000 here. So I'm going to save this, I'm going to build, and I'm going to go outside and let's take a look at upgrades. So upgrade points, we have one available, but I'm going to bring our total funding down to 2 million. It's a risk, obviously, because we might fail contracts, but let's do this. I don't know if the whole dock... So one benefit of having that little fuel tank is that if we want to do the docking thing, we could do it with that. And maybe we could just do the docking mission by refueling that tug. But I don't know. It's possible that if we just undock the capsule and then redock the capsule, it'll fulfill the mission. I don't know. It didn't say rendezvous and docking. It just said docking. So that's an interesting question. We'll have to test that. So I'm going to up our science to uh, let's say 0.5 signs per day seems like a nice number to go for okay and then increase our build rate I I don't remember which technology allows us to have a second build slot but we'll go with this for now okay so then we'll bring it down to 90 days possibly I shouldn't be so conservative and I should be spending a lot more of our funds but we'll go with this for now Okay, which means that the Aphrodite approaching Venus will be the first thing we take care of. So, yes. I don't know, maybe I should do, do some more build points. Yeah, let, let me get it to uh, four build points per second. It'll make me feel better. Okay, let's jump to it. It's got two hours, but we might as well pay attention to it now. So there is a Mars transfer window coming up, and if our Nico Centaur rocket works out for us, we could send a pretty substantial mission over there. Um, actually, larger than many real missions to to Mars. Okay, everything seems to be in order. We have electric charge. We have our solar panels out. Communication is good. I mean, we've got a delay of about five and a half minutes, but that's expected. Then taking a look at our trajectory in, we have an encounter and a periapsis of uh, 3,600 uh, 3, kilometers. It doesn't really, uh, we don't, it's not really a Venus flyby, so we don't have a maximum altitude to worry about. We just need some scientific data, so that's fine. Okay, well, I don't see any reason not to proceed, so let's do so. Very well, we are in Venus SOI. I'm going to quickly check what it would take to get into orbit. It looks like 1061. I think we're just shy. Let's see. And this is doing it right at periapsis, which I think we'll have communication for. Uh, 
Oh man. Oh wow. Eight eighty-five and it looks like Yeah, wow. Eight eighty-six and uh we're done for. I don't suppose I have some locked fuel somewhere, I doubt it. I'm gonna make sure that we conserve fuel, so I'm not gonna have RCS enabled right now. Okay, we can do that atmospheric pressure scan that we can transmit. Ah, everything's popping out now. Okay, so it was action group three. Okay, so radio plasma wave scan. Transmit. Orbital observations we've done. Atmospheric pressure scan we've done, but it doesn't say that we've done it, so maybe I should transmit it again. Uh, temperature scan. Okay, let's do that. And micrometeorite detector. Okay, and gravity scan. Lots of science. And magnetometer scan. Yeah, we're piling up the science. 199 science we've gotten. We'll hold off on the goo container until we're close. Okay, well, it seems like a shame that it doesn't look like we'll get into orbit. Let me replot right at periapsis to see if maybe that'll give us a better... I could have gotten closer to Venus is what I should have done. I should have nudged it closer to Venus and maybe it cost less to get into orbit. I don't know, it, it's it's possible, fairly, one meter per second kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, when transitioning from the map view, it seems to give the look of Venus that I was expecting, but then, then it turns all white. Okay, so I'm going to activate RCS and wait five minutes for that. Okay, yes, just above Venus's Midlands, transmit. And I'm going to start turning once the RCS is on. Biological sample? Uh, well, I'm only 12.5 science, but transmit. That's sad. Apparently not much data. Okay, RCS, I'm going to do a single burst. Okay, telescope observations. Magnetometer scan, radio plasma wave scan, and atmospheric pressure scan. Temperature scan, and micrometeorite detector. All told, we'll have over 400 science, it looks like. Okay. Fuel settled. Hold retrograde. Okay, SEP. Ah, SEP is gonna take five minutes. Good thing I throttled down. Uh, let's, uh, we've got 478 and we need 478. So, well, that's the situation. Oh! We spun, we spun all over the place. Insufficient avionics? Hold on. Well, uh, if we burn a little bit of fuel, we'll have avionics, but we won't be able to make orbit. Wonder how we met. Well, I once again made it to 0.04 tons more than I should have, I guess. We did fulfill the contract, so that's good. Okay. And this. Okay, there we go. I was wondering why is it not firing? We will try our best to get into orbit, but it doesn't look like we're going to make it this time. Thanks to all that weird... I, I probably should have retracted all the, all the stuff, maybe. 
I'm just gonna go f retrograde and hope for the best. Nope, we're out, and we are still on escape. Very much so. So... So yeah, that's the situation. Couldn't make orbit, just uh, just barely. Uh, we'll give the sciences one more try, just in case any of them are bio-independent. Okay, not that one, not that one, not that one. Nope. Okay. Alright, back to the space center. Alright, well, it was a huge bounty of science for us, so let's go to the R&D building and see what we should unlock. I mean, I think antennae are a huge thing that we need to focus on. I guess these will be good. There's a lot of antennae here to choose from. Better solar panels. RTGs even. Okay, let's, uh, I mean, this is expensive science, 160 science. But I think this is where we need to go. Let me just quickly check though that we're not losing any opportunities. These are hardly interesting. The, I like the Ranger Block 3 core, but it's not the most pressing item. Uh, we could use the Gemini capsule. That's another 100 science. Okay, uh, improved electrics. Okay, what's this one? High power electrics. That's for space stations kind of thing. I want a Gemini capsule. We're already unlocking improved stage combustion, right? Yeah, already being researched. And heavy orbital rocketry is already being researched. J2s are not yet researched. We could go straight to the J2 Aerospike. That would be fancy. Not much in that node though, and it's very expensive. I have no idea. Advanced stage combustion, all we've got there is a separation motor. <laughs> so I'm probably missing some mod that's supposed to give me something useful there. Got more actuators. Lots of actuators here. Short term habitation. This is station sort of stuff too. Not a bad idea. Crew cabins. But then we've got mature capsules here. Big Gemini, and the Mark II pod, and Apollo. Maybe we should save up for that. So I'll, I'll retain the remainder of my funds. Okay, I think we can time warp to the Nico Centaur test with the Oliver II. Alright, here we are. That's quite a thin rocket, actually. Okay, well, we'll have to see. Thrall up, SAS is on. Smart SAS should be down here somewhere. No Kerbal inside, very important. Uh, we're already in the yellow, so it's actually taxing the system a bit. That's interesting. Let me quickly check Alt F12, the debug menu, just to make sure nothing is like causing problems. Nothing serious, it looks like. All right, so here we go. Because there is a little bit of stickiness here. Very well. Ignition. And launch. And we're off. Oh, I guess we'll be doing an off-plane transfer because I didn't bother the time before the moon. I guess you could think of it as a super proton in a way. Okay, separation. Okay, booster step is good. Okay, looking alright with the four RD-253 engines. Okay, first stage is all clear, set. Okay, second stage engines are lit. These are the RD-0210s that 
we uh, tested a bit in the previous episode. Right now we have 4,600 data units on them and increasing. Mean time before failure, 205 minutes it says. We haven't run them uh, for 205 minutes collectively since our last failure, but it's only mean time before failure. Doesn't mean it's absolute time before failure. Yeah, we've got quite a big in inclination difference with respect to the moon, about 35 degrees. So it's got to be an interesting transfer. Fifty-five seconds left on this stage. All engines working nominally right now. Okay, the second stage was fine. Separation. And stage three. NK-9Vs. As far as test flight is concerned, we have only 9,000, uh, no, sorry, 3,000 data units on them, 64 minutes mean time before failure, so these are the more troublesome ones. And you know, uh, we saw that if one goes out, it, this can't be controlled very well. Bright side, we do have some extra Delta V on us for a lunar flyby. Downside, we seem to be going down. Um, let's pitch up a little bit more here definitely want to go to space. We're not quite in space yet. We're still at 130 kilometers. I've made the trajectory a little bit too tight it seems. Okay, and I think I've overcompensated for the fact that we were so close to the Earth. At this point, given our remaining Delta V, I think I can say that we will be aiming for the moon, even though one engine just decided to cut out right there. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, because it's so light right now, this one engine can hold it. Last time when we lost one engine, it was because the, uh, we couldn't hold it because it was so heavy. But this time, I think this one engine can actually hold on to it. Uh, sort of. Gonna give us a bit of an inclination change along with everything else. Eight, nine, forty. Okay. Well, we're in orbit. <laughs> Actually, I could have dumped this stage and uh, prevented a mess here, but okay. Well, it's gonna stick in orbit now. So, and we are going to use the RCS here to push forward. Oh, I should have locked. Hold on. I should nudge in here. Oh, it's tough to look at this. Uh, let's lock this tank. Okay. Uh, so, prograde, just turn us. You know what? No, no forget it. Forget it. Just uh, spin around as you like. And let's plot for the moon. Now, to get to the moon, we're going to have to do an off plane transfer now. And that means that we're going to have to hit over there. So it's going to take us a while to get there like this. With an actual crew, we better not do it this way. Oh. There we go. Moon periapsis 234 kilometers. And we're going to have that maneuver in an hour and 28 minutes. So we're, we have to hope that this, which we don't have communication with, right now we'll regain communication in that time right now it's using a lot of electric charge because it's got no solar panels out and and it's got large controllers on it still let me remind myself about the stage time on this hydrolock stage 7 minutes and 49 seconds probably used to be a little bit longer than that but we'll start out at about 5 minutes so we need to start turning Okay, the RL-10s are reading very stable. Gonna throttle up. And activate through staging, I guess. Looks
looks good. We are on our way to the moon. And there is a point where even if this stage fails, we'll be able to do a lunar flyby with the service module engine. Oh, uh, we've, we've got some sort of turn here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Stop that. And shut down. All right. RL-10 burn was completely successful. And now uh, we're just going to dump that and use the service module to fine-tune our orbit. So, set. All right. Antennae out. Very good. Solar panels out. Excellent. All right. Uh, it's it's uh it's quick saving. All right. Um unlocked fuels. Right. Dip, dip. Okay, good. Now, let's take a look at what our approach to the moon is currently. Get rid of that. Ideally, we should have left the the third stage, well, not third stage, fourth stage, the RL-10 stage on escape like this. And then that would have been nice, but we did not do that. Okay, we have a periapsis around the moon, which seems really good. It's a little bit sad that we didn't have more scientific instruments on board. Okay, that's something we'll just have to deal with. Housed power, electric charge seems to be recharging fine. I feel like I should have another rocket cooking while we go go out there, because our periapsis is in 10 days. And then we're going to try and make orbit, and then break orbit, and then come back. But, yeah, let me uh, look at the VAB and see what other rocket I want. To well, maybe we should try another one of these and have it be the Kerbald version, right? Okay, so I'm going to quickly get one of those cooking, and then we'll be back here with this. Okay, so the next uh, Oliver on the Nico Centaur is queued up. And so we can feel free to time warp this all the way out to the moon. Everything seems to be in order. Let's start going. So again, it's got about 22 days with food, water, and oxygen. And so uh, the fact that we have this off-plane transfer wouldn't cause a problem for a crewed mission necessarily. And yes, if you're wondering, I, I am thinking of just landing a single Kerbal on the moon rather than, you know, a lot of Kerbals. Or even two Kerbals. Because otherwise it's going to be hard for me to beat the date of Apollo, considering where, where are we at right now. Uh, we're at June 10th, 1966. So I've basically got three years and a month. So I want to make the trimmest mission I can. But we'll see once we unlock heavy orbital rocketry, that might help. That might save the situation a bit. Right now we're on a crash course for the moon, but we'll correct that. Okay, so now we need to sidestep the moon. Let's check to make sure our engines are okay. So... Radial plus or radial minus? Maybe radial minus, or is it radial plus? I always get those mixed up. It's radial plus. Okay, let's ignite the service module engines. Oh, well, that was too far. Shoot. I should have just used RCS. I didn't realize that I was not buried very deep in, in the moon. Oh, I forgot to dump... I keep forgetting to jettison the nose cones. Hold on. That's those, right? Yeah. Alright. Gotta make sure to wait for the delays. That's key. Not the most efficient uh, solar panel arrangement, I'll grant you. Not a problem right now. The electric charge is held up just fine. We probably want them staggered. 
so that um, maybe the service module one will be in an X form. That'll probably be more important if we adapt this system for Mars or something like that. Just uh, one lone Kerbal in a really cramped space on a very long mission to Mars. Doesn't sound very appetizing, does it? We'll have to think about that. We are in orbit around the moon, but we want to make a tight orbit to maximize the test. Okay. I'll say 203 by 47 is okay, because I don't want to mess with it. Now it's just a matter of breaking orbit and heading home. We're going around this way. So we want our maneuver here. Now over here it doesn't look like we'll have communication so maybe we should do it like earlier when we definitely have communication. It's gonna mess us up a little bit but it'd be a good idea. None of this doing burns without communication thing. Okay, and then the the tug will leave in... A, well, you know what? Let's do a... Well, we're not in orbit around... Shoot. We're not in orbit around the Earth, so we can't do that contract, huh? So we'll have to uh, go out into interplanetary space... Uh, not interplanetary, and uh, back into Earth space to do that. Um, no, no, where was it? First docking. Orbit periapsis above 150 kilometers. Well, it says check mark. I wonder if we can fool it. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see if we can fool it. I'm got undocking and redock. This could be a bad idea. This could be stranded here. But that's part of what we're testing, so let's do that. Let me clear up some windows. Okay. Decouple node. Okay, and then this fuel. Okay, looking good. This has control. And this portion has control as well. We've got communication. So I'm going to set as target. And I'm going to control from this docking port. We'll have to watch out for our antennae. It's a pretty tight fit. Okay, that should be enough to reset the ports, I think. Oh, we got magnetism. Wow. I didn't even realize magnetism was a thing in realism overall. And the antennae were okay. We docked. Did it fulfill the contract? Yeah, first docking. All right, we have a hard lock. Nice work. All good. So, contract fulfilled. That's one load off our backs. A lot of probes destroyed because of our stages. So, of course, we've got the flyby, Deimos, Phobos, and all that. But that's one load off our backs. Uh, next thing, crude lunar flyby. Also, we have to remember that we've got the opportunity for Mars coming up. We might do the Mars one before the crude lunar flyby. So maybe I should start building that rocket and reprioritize. I'll think about that after this returns. Depends if the capsule survives. We will have to see. Okay, I think it is time to exit then. So let's time warp to that. That maneuver takes uh, 805 here. I usually plan up to 1,200 just in case. Uh, let me make sure I'm controlling from the right place. Oh, it seems like it. Oh, no, it wasn't. The one thing you don't want to uh, be is short on fuel when you're trying to get home. That's an unpleasant sort of situation. Also, the staging after we docked seems to be all messed up. All right, back home we go. Okay. And 
get rid of that and see what our real situation is. Okay, RCS fine tuning. We we don't really need the tug to stay in Earth orbit, but I guess we can try that out for size. It's got some delta v to work with. Okay, uh, so we'll set an initial reentry. I'm gonna say 65 kilometers to really test the pod out. Now I don't know about the g forces. We'll have to see. Oh right, the periapsis was reading the lunar periapsis, that's why. Okay, now undock. Okay. Oh. Huh, our arizine in this tank was expended. I decided to use that arizine first. That that's all right. We we have. I think that's all right. Well, we have some in here, but it looks like I need to pump it in there. I'm reserving the stuff in the top here for when we re-enter. Okay, maybe it'll work now. Okay, now I can work. Okay, we'll have to watch out for that. 3,000 delta V as it is. Could probably return to lunar orbit if it wanted to. Just stay around the moon. Might be safer for it. But let's just make sure Earth periapsis is okay. And then we might want to drop apoapsis just to keep it in a stable orbit. Okay, 170 is fine. Now there's also the matter of communication as we come down. So even right now I'm going to activate the parachute, uh, well arm the parachutes I should say. I have no idea. Um, it looks like we're gonna be coming down in the Pacific maybe. That would be good. Actually we might go right past the Pacific. We'll see. Alright, this hopefully can balance out. We gotta transfer to, well, once it stops wiggling, uh, I'll use SAS, I'll use SAS. Once it stops wiggling, we gotta transfer the remaining fuel back into the pod. Okay, ejecting the service module. I, I call many things the service module. We have two service modules in this case, but this service module is off. Going to go negative our surface velocity. We've also got the reaction wheel here, don't forget. I'll unlock this fuel. Ooh, very powerful. And I'm gonna put caps lock on. For now we'll just let it spin around with persistent rotation. Now we don't have very long range antennas on here anymore. All our t antennae are gone. So we're at the mercy of the armed parachutes and smart ASS holding, holding that. Now some people say capsule side up, capsule side down. I've got turn descent mode on. <laughs> uh, here we go, turn descent mode on. I'm gonna turn it I, I've tried a capsule side, I mean hatch side down before. I'll try hatch side up and uh, may, maybe uh, for the adventurous of you I'll turn Smart ASS off and not hold retrograde to see what happens. But we'll do that once we get into the atmosphere a bit. Okay, now I'm going to turn that off. Uh, uh, okay, uh, that was a bad idea. Hmm. Okay. 
So that wasn't a very good test. Yeah. Well, live and learn. So at least there was no Kerbal in there. I think I'll just leave the RCS on when entering the atmosphere from now on. I think that might be a better idea. All right, back to the VAB. Actually, did I say VAB? I meant back to this little guy, who I think we should rename. Um, let's see. Change name tag. Rename vessel is what I meant. Um, it's got asterisk engine, so how about S? S. Uh, hold on. Asterisk. Aster tug. One. Okay. Aster tug one. And I also want to bring down its apoapsis so that it's in a safe position. It's got 1,300 electric charge, which is not much in realism overhaul terms. Okay, that should do the trick. You take a look at its orbit. I don't think it's going to be encountering the moon like that. I hope not. And its periapsis is okay too. Inclination's a bit tough to get to, not too hard. Uh, the longitude of a saying no suggests that it's not too hard to get to it from Cape Canaveral. But here it is. It is going to remain up here for an extended period of time. Next time in the next episode, I think I'm going to build something to do with Mars, given the fact that it's only 212 days away. I don't know whether I'm going to wait until I get that heavy orbital rocketry complete, because that's got some nifty engines that we could use. So that's a possibility. Uh, another thing we need to take a look at is our technology. We'll be getting improved stage combustion with my favorite NK-15 and NK-15V engines in that bundle. The rest, uh, maybe I should move up improved electrics and second gen capsules. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Alright, so that is the current situation. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.